Hi, this is Jeffrey Tucker with Liberty.me. We're at Freedom Fest right now. We just finished a really fun luncheon in which we debated uh, the question of do we need a state? Would society be better off with it or without it? And my debating partner was none other than the great Doug Casey. I'm pleased to have you here with us. Uh, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. And it was a fun lunch. Um, we had an ex-U.S. general who really is... I don't know. He's a nice guy personally, he's sincere. But you know, uh, Hitler is famous for having liked dogs and kids. So the fact that somebody can be personable is not often an indicator of their philosophical beliefs. What did you think about his point concerning the founding fathers? That seemed to be really central in his view. Well, listen, the founding fathers were good for their time, but I'm of the opinion that the Constitution and the formation of the United States was actually a coup. It was a coup d'etat that overthrew a, a, a better system, which was those 13 independent colonies. In fact, I've got to go further than that. There's so many things that I like about the American Revolution, but at the same time, if they'd stayed 13 independent states, the U.S. wouldn't have become the behemoth beating other people up around the world. So maybe we would have been better not having united into one country that's now turned into an empire. And, and, and maybe without the revolution, things would have worked themselves out uh, eventually, and we would have kicked out the colonial powers just by de facto, you think? Yes, that's right. That would have happened. The Civil War would have been avoided. Yeah, I mean, bigger is not better when it comes to states and governments. Is your thought evolving on this? It's right at the end of the debate. You said, well, let's just forget about anarchy. Why don't we have seven billion small states? That was interesting to me. Yes, if people like the idea of a state, what's the ideal number of states? Now in the world we have, uh, it's a flexible number depending on how you define a state. There's about 225 states in the world. Is that the ideal number? Maybe it's 500. Maybe it's 10,000. Uh, some people think it should be just one state. But how about 7 billion little states? And, and you can migrate between them and there would be a lot of competition between them. It's called private property. When you come on to my ranch, you play by my rules. I'm polite, you're polite. And if you don't like it, you don't have to come on my property. Mark Skousen immediately responded that that's a very inefficient system. We need a, a, a unitary large state to get rid of the inefficiencies associated with all these micro-jurisdictions. Uh, seven billion micro-jurisdictions. How would that be problematical? It's called a free market where people cooperate and compete with each other. No, I don't see it as being a problem. And as technology advances further, you're going to need... You know, roads should already be anachronisms. If the state had not dissipated trillions and trillions of dollars with its warfare and its welfare, there'd be enough capital in existence that we'd probably be several generations of technology ahead of where we are. And roads would be an anachronism, I believe, at this point. You are a, a sort of a really interested in technology and in the future. You seem to suggest that, that uh, the nation state is not long for this world, given the advance of technology. And in fact, you're going to be teaching a class on the subject for Liberty Me You at, at some point in the future. Yes, uh, I'm a, an advocate of Neil Stevenson's idea of files. Uh, and uh, I guess in our luncheon, I pointed out that we started out dealing with each other in small groups, tribes, clans, 40 to 200 people. It evolved there as the population grew into kingdoms where you had to worship your prince. Stupid idea. And then we got into an even more stupid idea where you worship the geographical area of land that your nation state belongs in democracy where the lowest common denominator supposedly rules. But I think the next evolution is going to be that people will find their real countrymen through the internet, among other things, other technologies, and find that they have more in common with strange people all around the world than they do with the people that just accidentally happen to have been born within a geographical area. 
And in the United States, and I don't call it America anymore because it's not America, it's degraded and devolved from an excellent idea called America to just another nation state. But um, I think that uh, I don't have any particular loyalty to my fellow Americans, most half of whom are dependent upon the government at this point directly, and therefore they're living off of me. They're actually my enemies. Some guy in Russia that shares my belief is my real friend, my real countryman. Your book that you wrote for laissez-faire that we published was in many ways the inspiration behind Liberty.me because what you're describing as a kind of a geographically non-contiguous human associations uh, forming their own sort of miniature governments, if you want to call them that, is in many ways the vision of Liberty.me. So thank you for that wonderful book. What's the name of the book again? I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I... Well, let me see. Which book? It's had a very dangerous title. Uh, something like uh, well, I promoted the market for liberty heavily. Yeah, of uh, I brought it. I've got to say, I personally brought it out of obscurity when it was just a samizdat of 500 copies back in 1971. Amazing. Um, and what else? The international man, crisis investing, strategic investing, uh, crisis investing for the 90s, which is kind of my favorite book and my. Two most recent books are Totally Incorrect and That's Right on the Money. Yeah. Totally Incorrect is the one. That's in many ways a do-it-yourself libertarianism. Now, you've been around a long time. Are you pleased at the growth of these ideas? Uh, what do you see at Freedom Fest? Uh, you know, back when I found that I was an anarchist, uh, which is to say, back in the early 70s, uh, there weren't any anarchists around, and people thought you were... But now, even on... The mainstream media, uh, anarcho-capitalism, is actually mentioned. So, um, and there are a lot of young people here, kids in their teens and 20s. So it's not just guys that have gray hair like me. So yeah, it's gratifying. So the good news is our movement is growing quickly. The bad news is that the states of the world are becoming extremely What's the word when cancer gets out of control? Right? Metastasizing? Yes, yeah. they're metastasizing and getting worse rapidly. So it's a, a race. I don't know who's going to win the race. Well, is these are the kinds of dis things we can discuss in your class. I very much appreciate your sitting down for me or standing up here with me with this interview, and it's wonderful to see you again. Well, thanks, Jeff. You're one of my favorite people anywhere. <laughs> thank you, Doug. Jeffrey Tucker, Liberty.me, Doug Casey. Thank you for joining us.